Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 141. This episode is the return of one of my best friends in the whole world, Victor Espinosa. Now, Victor was one of the first guests I ever had on this show over five years ago. He was actually the fourth episode I ever recorded. And, well, a lot has changed since then, both with this show and our lives. And, uh, well, we talk about it. Uh, we talk about all the different things that have gone on since his last appearance on the show. Uh, we talk about the different projects that we've worked on together in the meantime, uh, from our upcoming Star Wars audio drama to the short film Blisters. We talk about our creative processes and his newest venture with Authentic Florida. Victor started a YouTube channel, website, and blog all about the nature of Florida and the different state parks he's visited. It's really cool. Uh, he's also been doing a ton of camping lately, and we talked a lot about that as well. We talk about different camping stories, things he's learned the hard way, almost spiritual experience of being completely surrounded by nature, what he brings with him, what he shoots his videos on, and much more. But uh, hey, you know, enough about that. Let's just jump right into it here for yourself. Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, episode number 141, The Return of Victor Espinosa. Theme song time. <laughs> about well you know a lot more than me so you're okay hey that's not saying much <laughs> no it is not <laughs> how's the day been so far not bad just starting just starting i got my coffee so good start good start it warmed up so that's nice yeah it's pretty warm how did you survive this past <laughs> i weekend? don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, brian every night i was there it was below freezing my god <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're like I'm just as surprised to be here as you are. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, yeah. A lot of it. A lot of it. Especially when I tell people, I was just telling my neighbor uh, when I was cleaning my equipment. She was like, "Are you moving?" I said, "No, no, no. I just got back from a camping trip." And she's like, "Did you enjoy it?" I said, "Well, a couple of nights it was below freezing, but yeah." And then she just cut me off and was like, "Oh my god, why would you do that?" Uh. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I don't. I enjoyed it, I guess, in a weird way. Yeah, it was good. Do you find that a lot of people have that reaction to camping when you talk about it? Uh, yes, and especially uh, when I tell them that I'm alone and in a tent. Sure. <laughs> um, like, like when I tell people, all right, I'm going camping, they're like, oh, cool, you going with, with like any friends or somebody? They're like, no, it's just me. They're like, it's just you alone in the woods. I go, well, I mean, there's other campers, but yeah. And they go, oh, dude. Wow. <laughs> what why <laughs> or yeah and then i tell yeah when i'm at the campground uh, a lot of times what happens is i'll be cooking dinner and i'll hear people walking by my camps i go oh look at that he's by himself and he's in a tent huh oh, no. <laughs> and then i'll look over and they'll go oh hey hi how's it going <laughs> you have that like old western snarl at him what are you saying I, over like, there? yes like I, I understand how i come off to a lot of these people <laughs> i have a, a a big knife on my hip. I have a crazy beard. I'm by myself. I'm in a tent compared to 95% of the other campers are in RVs or campers or pop-ups. Isn't that weird? Growing up, yes. like maybe because I grew up poor, but like we always had like tents. I I've never been camping not in a tent. Yeah. That's very strange that nowadays it's like if you're in a tent, that's strange. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe it's because I'm in state parks. I don't know. Every once in a while, yeah, I'll meet other people that are that are just intense and like, yo, hey, kindred spirits, what's up? Sure. Um, uh, but yeah, most of the time it's these people driving around and they're like, uh, like Mercedes Benz golf carts. Like, oh, look at that one. He's in a tent, <laughs> darling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they drive on. Look at him in the elements. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, there's. Dude, there's some campers that drive in there that's like, that's over $200,000 for that vehicle. Mother and of God. It's so big, they have to like rip up the signs next to their campsite so that way they can even back into their campsite. What? It's, 
It used to be <laughs> one of my favorite uh, entertainments while I'm out there mm-hmm. is watching couples try and back into a campsite. Um, <laughs> You're they'll, good. They'll pull left. up and yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> the the wife gets out and she's like, to the left, no, to the. I said my left. <laughs> And the husband's like, well, was it my left or your left? And I, and I just sit there, eat my dinner, <laughs> just watch these people yell at each other. It's great. <laughs> it's its own brand of entertainment. I respect that. You don't get much else out there. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be it, huh? But yeah, because we, it was in the 40s here like two days ago. So you were, how far were you up? I was uh, 30 minutes away from the Georgia border. Sheesh. So you're what, five hours plus. Yeah. So it gets uh, way colder up there. It, uh, I, uh, let, let me sum it up this way, Brian. Um, <laughs> in the morning, I went to my cooler to get eggs, bacon, and iced tea. Um, the, like the Publix bottle of, uh, green iced tea. Love it. Uh, take the iced tea out, put it on the roof of my car, go in, grab the eggs, grab the bacon. I go to grab the iced tea and it's frozen to the roof of my car. What? And I break it off, and I look at the ring of ice on my roof, and I go, okay, it's going to be that kind of day. <laughs> All right. Wow. That's How did you stay warm? I know you said you had a heated blanket. Was that it? That's about it, yeah. Did, did it work? Was it good enough? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, okay. I'm, I'm like a double burrito in my sleeping bag. Smart. Smart. Um, yeah, I have a I have a big fire. I have a heating blanket, and I have an insatiable will to survive. <laughs> That's the most important of them all. <laughs> My dad has a, a buffalo hide that he's had for years and years and years. And when he used to go camping, that's what he would bring. He'd just throw this huge buffalo hide over him, and it like it would be snowing outside, and he would still be warm underneath it. It's pretty amazing. Your dad just gets cooler every <laughs> time I hear another story like that. I know, right? Well, who, who does? Oh my gosh, man! Like, no, I'm gonna go to an Outfitters and get a nice thermal jacket. Forget that. I've got a no. buffalo hide. He literally has it, like, and it's not even like a nice one. Like, it's not. It's cured in the sense that, like, you know, it's just a flat piece of buffalo hide, but it's not nice underneath. It's still kind of rough. Like, <laughs> it just. You're very aware you're wearing a dead animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's half the experience, it, uh, it seems. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah, I actually, because I'm, I'm still for sure taking you up on this. One day I'm going to go camping with you. And I'm totally, if it's going to be cold, I'm bringing one. I'll be like, Dad, can I borrow your buffalo hide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, and the next place that I'm going, um, it's a prairie. And oh. it's the only place in Florida where there's supposed to be wild buffalo. Really? Wow. Where's that at? It's called Payne's Prairie. It's like 30 Ooh. minutes away from where I just kept uh, camped, actually. Ooh. Um, Is there large treks? Large treks you're yes. making? Yes. <laughs> but I'll take it, dude. I get to see this whole freaking state. I'll love it. That's true. That's true. I So I looked it up this morning. You were the fourth episode of my show. Uh, the fourth you brave brave man hey i am i'm very honored to be among some heavy hitters that you've had dude isn't that crazy that i i will say that's one of my favorite things to go back and look on with my show is i see like you know mariana van zeller <laughs> and then i yeah. see like my dad <laughs> it's a those are it's a fun listen, mix. it's the interesting podcast i agree yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's and the best part is it's anyone who i find interesting so yeah. i'm not even like oh i'm gonna go out and like oh i think people will like this honestly i don't care what people <laughs> think it's like <laughs> this is what i want it's my show so like i had i had a review i never look at reviews but i randomly like was on the itunes page one day and you know they're like at the bottom and i was like oh and it was like the most recent one because i never get reviews and mm-hmm. it was like the host says there you go too much and it was distracting and I was like, yeah, I also say that's fair. Um, and like eight other things way too much. And so like the following week I was editing, it might've been Mariana's episode. And uh, I said, there you go a bunch. And then I took it out and I was like, wait a second. I do what I want. And I put it back. <laughs> 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 it's my show. <laughs> exactly, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's that's become the thing. But you you were so early on that I cuz I didn't find my stride until like I want to say episode 25. 
around 25 was when I was like, oh, that's what this show is. Okay, I, I got my style. I got my, I figured it out what my show yeah. is. And you were so early on that I used to put like uh, an identifier before the names. So it was like cosplayer this, writer this. You are author Victor Espinosa in episode I four. Am super honored. Yeah, yeah. And now you're back after 130 something episodes. Yeah, dude, look at you. <laughs> and five years. Five years is a long time. A lot has happened and in five years. A lot of friends made. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the craziest part of it all. I did not see that coming. Yeah, and I'm, I, I listened to the one with uh, you and TJ Storm as well. Oh, I love that guy. I He's, love that uh, guy. Just A, like the nicest, right? most excited person. Right? And you know what you wouldn't know? We, we hit like a... The first five, ten minutes of our call was troubleshooting technical problems. Yeah, the episode starts with you guys kind of laughing it off, so I figured there was something. Yep, yep. And he's like, just the cool, he's the coolest dude. He actually, him and Darren Ross, I've been thinking a lot about this. Uh, with, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty introspective person, and so I think about things a lot. And for me, life is, you know, the accumulation of all the experiences that you have. And mm-hmm. so I look back on episodes that I've done with people and how they've impacted my life, like, daily. And I'm like, oh, right, because of this episode, I now do this. Um, yeah. And TJ Storm introduced me to the boys. Crazy. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't I hadn't heard of it before. And he's like, you got to check out the boys. And I was like, all right. And now I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so now when I watch the boys, I'm like, I know what this is because TJ Storm. And then him and Darren Ross, who I, I – he's one of my favorite people – um they are the reason i got back into martial arts because like Uh. i was just so inspired after talking to them and i was like oh right yeah why don't yeah let's figure this out so i I started back up uh training i do like three months ago and that was because of them that was uh because of ghost of tsushima it's i mean it was just good timing it's good timing (laughs) (laughs) but no it's been it's been a while it's been a while since you've been on five years is a long time to think about yeah, and I, I'm I'm I mean I, I'm still writing, but I've kind of shifted gears a bit. Yeah, same. same. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. I mean, we've both moved in that time. I got married. True. We. True. Are, I got a dog. You know, I got Kubo. We have written together, which has been cool. It's, uh, it's it, been it's crazy. Awesome. How? I, yeah, because we haven't. Everybody knows at this point. You so I've talked about this before s- sometimes, but it's interesting when I have people on the show that like I'm so close with because so much of my show is getting to know someone that I don't know. And I would argue right. probably 90 to 95% of the people I have on my show I've never talked to before the show. Right. So I'm genuinely getting to know them, but we've known each other for a very long time and I consider you one of my best friends. So it's interesting to be like, "Oh right. We we still talk like multiple times a week." Yeah. <laughs> and if we don't, I'm like, oh, man, what's Brian up to? Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, it's been like four days. Victor, are you okay? Did you freeze? <laughs> <laughs> and then I just pulled you into my ridiculous <laughs> hurricane of al- always working on different things. And now we're in that. Which I'm I'm happy again and honored to be a part of. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. We're, uh, I mean, you know, we're making an audio drama. That's exciting. One of many. One of many. We're working on a lot of different things. A lot of different things. Pretty exciting. We Irons can't in the fire. super talk about details quite yet. Yeah. Like, what's what's public? We know that we're making The Adventures of the Zoland Art. Yes. Um, I've talked about the process a little bit. Um, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a weird thing because we've been working on it for so long. Yes, because I first I gave you the first draft in what June of last year. I was gonna say it's got to be well over a year at this. Oh, point. Oh, for sure, for sure. I think I started writing it just before my birthday in 2019, and my birthday is July 2nd. So dang, dang. I know, I know, right? Isn't that insane? It freaks me out <laughs> because I sent you the first draft. So I started writing it in June, which means I, it took me like I don't know a week to write the first draft, something like that. And I immediately sent it to you, and we went from July to October, bouncing back and forth, rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Ended with nine drafts later on what we shot. Dang. I know. And then we've been in production since. 
Well, uh, hopefully it goes well, and then we'll see what the future holds. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. We got the trailer came out, the full length trailer that was semi recent. Yeah. That yeah. was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm excited for people to hear it. I'm also very nervous, but I'm also excited. It, I, yeah, it's that mixture. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we did that. We're making an audio drama. Uh, blisters. Blisters is yes. a, it was a learning experience for both of us. Yeah. That, that we shot. You want to talk about like time passed? We shot blisters the first time in, I believe it was September of 2019. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can a, see no, that. October. It was October. It was October of 2019, and then we had to reshoot it September of 2020. Dang man. I know. I've been sitting with these stories for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've got the fire under us. We're trying to get it done. That's right. And they will both be done soon. I can't announce dates. Relatively. There's, yeah. I will say that we have dates. I can say that. When does this come out? Let me check. Hold on. You have dates? Really? Yeah, I got dates. Oh, yeah. Literally as of like three days ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, okay, so this come, this episode will come out the 18th, so that is next um, week, so of this Oh, month. of December? This this episode here, not what we're okay, working on. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, 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 the audio drama is not coming out December 18th. Oh, man. I know, I know. <laughs> I actually, you know what, this is great podcasting. I'm going to text you right now. Do uh, it. The date of uh of the audio drama release. I, I can say blisters. Blisters will be out next month. Dope. It was going to be out this month, but uh, Slim's actually going to do music for it. Whoa. I know, right? Hey, he's uh, in the studio, and I'm loving it. Right? Same, same, same. I and, and, like, it was really important to me because, you know, the subject matter. Yeah. That he had to have his handprint on it. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's January. Blisters will be out, and I'm really excited about it. I saw a rough cut of it yesterday, and it's really good. Like, Chris really made something special out of it, which is exciting. You know what you're doing, and everyone that was there knew what they were doing, so it's good. Isn't that crazy? Because you were there the first shoot and the second shoot. Isn't it crazy what it's like when you put people that know what they're doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> to not have me doing, like, 50 different hats and Slim doing, like, 50 different hats? That's, uh, I mean, you... Uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of want to do it mostly yourself, or I guess you feel like you can do it, and then yeah. there's so many gaps that you're like, oh, hey, firewood would be a <laughs> <laughs> would be a good thing to bring. We should have maybe yeah. seen that. <laughs> yeah, you'd think if it's if it's a campfire scene that you'd bring firewood. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I limit myself to just acting. I was like, I don't know how to do anything else, guys. That's right. This is why I will never direct a short film again, Brian. I, I don't blame you. I feel kind of bad about that sometimes. Um, you know, don't. If it's it makes not your you, fault. If it makes you feel better, I made Logan run sound, and well, we couldn't use any of it. <laughs> we well, look I, as much as I appreciate it. Uh, to hire a professional to do your stuff next time, and not a friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Learn that lesson the hard way. Learn that lesson the hard way. I had Christian on recently, who shot it. He was, yeah, he was a DP, and he, yeah, I mean, he's incredible. We've worked on like three things since. And it's he's a really nice guy too. He was he's really nice the, at the nicest shooting. dude. The nicest. We when I didn't realize how alike we were like as people until he came on the show. Because like you know when you work with someone you don't like sit around a whole lot because you're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was saying like he's of the mind of making other people feel better, just in general. Like I just want to make somebody's day because then that makes me feel good. And I was like I agree with this. So it's pretty he's neat. A smart man. He is. He is. But it's been a long time. It's been a long time since he came on. A lot of well, I'm, I'm again, uh, compared to some of the people that you've had, uh, I'm, I'm very honored to talk about weird stories. Yeah. With you. So in five years, we've done a lot of things. The most recent thing that you've been up to, because it's also weird. I didn't think about this beforehand that we can't really talk about the audio drama, because it's not. Public. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I wasn't think sure this where through. you wanted to go with this. <laughs> I want to talk about a lot of things, but then there are things that I also want to talk about that we can't talk about, like the audio drama. How was it working on the audio drama? Because we're sure going to do stuff after it comes out. But from yeah. from your point of view, how was how was that experience? Because I know how it was well, for I mean, me I, to be like, hey, here's I, 
it, joy is work. <laughs> you you're you've got your fingers in every inch of the project. Yeah. Um, I was pretty much only involved in just editing, a, a little bit of creative writing, and uh, one voice. Yep. Um, so I've everything else I've I feel like I've seen from the outside, and I and I promote and I look at. Um, but I can really only speak on the writing process because yes. that was that was about it. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm totally down with. Uh, I just um. I was just reading through uh the original the original script of everything like when you, no when you way. sent the, you the last edits yeah somewhere in my email oh god um and yeah like uh it's it was a cool process to be an editor instead of the full writer um, oh i bet having been a writer to be on the other side of the table because, yeah, a lot of times when I sit down at the blank page, I know exactly what I want. Sometimes when I sit at the blank page, it's um, here's a really rough idea, and then I'm going to come back and iron it out, and then I'm going to come back again and make it into actual, like, a sentence instead of just ideas. Sure. Um, so it was a lot better to already have someone go through all of those parts, and I could look at what you wrote and go, all right, I see where you're going with this. Let me Let me fluff it up. Let me foreshadow this. Let me make this a little bit more emotional, and you're good. Bada bing. Yeah, I, and I mean, it, what, it's good. Like you, you did a great job. That's a good idea. It was good stories. It was awesome to just like, here. What wouldn't it be cool if this character? And you're like, yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> that that was my favorite thing about that was like, the way I don't know if like you'd learn this from other editors having been a writer yourself, but one of my favorite things about working with you reworking this script over and over and over like nine drafts to go from thirty five pages to like sixty six. That's a lot. Um, yeah, that's to to do that, all you did was kept asking questions, which I loved because it was like, oh, right, oh, right. You'd read a scene and you'd be like, well, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? And then I would go back and I would put it in the script to make sense why that was happening. And it just made the story so much more rounded out and I think made it significantly better. Yeah, that was, I mean, that's what I enjoyed doing was, yeah. uh, that's, that's, yeah, when I used to do like, uh, like, lego teaching stuff it was all about the socratic method mm -hmm. which is you you don't really like explicitly teach someone you just ask them a whole bunch of questions it works yeah you, and then you lead them to their own conclusion you just go why are you doing that wouldn't this be maybe better or how about you two and then you lead them to it so and it was your idea it was your story i didn't want to come in and be like well this would be better and i'm gonna take <laughs> this and make a new ending i wanted to be like well why why is this happening and why isn't this happening? And you would be like, that is a legitimate question that I didn't think of. Yep. Uh, and then you would come up with it yourself because I didn't want to like r write over your story. Sure, sure. And I'm pretty proud of how it ended. I'm pretty proud of how it, how it ended up. But uh, yeah. yeah, dude, that's why when you release it, you don't be nervous. It should, I mean, there's, there's stupid people on the internet, so <laughs> there might be stupid people on the internet, but... It's solid. So many people worked on it. Everyone that's worked on it has been proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. How how has that been kind of seeing like the cast and things like that and like this actually work? Because we, we've talked in the past before that like we both are notorious for not finishing things. Yeah. <laughs> is it yeah. how how have you mentally been able to contextualize that this is actually happening? Because I'm still kind I mean, of coming to terms with it. Every time you guys or any time you or Savannah post something, it's just more like, oh, that's right. You're supposed to have other people involved in stuff. <laughs> like, I forgot. You're not just the world doesn't end with you. Like, you, you need to you need to connect with other people. Like, and even as a writer, you shouldn't be your own editor. You shouldn't be like your own marketer. You're not your own publisher. You're that's why you have all these other people involved. Right. Um, yeah, you, that's why that's why I don't finish stuff is because I'm just by myself and then maybe I fizzle out or maybe I don't know where to go at some point or I finish it and I don't know who to send it to. Um, sure. So yeah, having having so many people on a team, yeah, it's awesome because then someone can raise their hand and go, oh, that problem we just ran into, I know someone who can fix it or I can fix it or right. I can make this better. That I will say that's something, uh, a big thing that I've learned specifically, I would say in the last like two years, the importance of a team. Yeah, the importance of a team. Like, cause I Ahmed Best has talked about before, and we know how much I love that guy. 
Um, mm. He's talked about how nobody does it alone, regardless of what anybody says. They could be like, quote unquote, yeah. self-made. Nobody's self-made. You had yeah. either a favor or somebody gave you an opportunity. Nobody does anything alone. Yeah. And like, I love that African proverb. It's like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I've yeah. really seen that like be true in the last few years. And it's crazy. It's crazy to watch and to think about. And I, I mean, at this point, you have a lot of supporters and fans that, that are there to like always help push along. Well, we'll see how that goes. You know, but... Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I am here to remind you of reality, sir. Yeah. All right. We'll see. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like thinking about using blisters as the example, uh, you know, that was, I needed a monologue. Actually, you know what? That is a great, another great example of somebody on this show that impacted my life in a direct way. The reason blisters happened is because Randall Duck Kim. Uh. Mm -hmm. He came on the show, and then it was we immediately connected, like best friends right. right away. And then a few months later, he came back on the show with his wife, and they were amazing. And since then, you know, they become really good friends. We still email every few months. Um, and so I sent them my reel a while back just to get their opinion because they both been, I mean, Randall's been a professional actor for like 50 yeah. years. Yeah. And um, they were like, you need a monologue. And I was like, what? I was like, in film, like nobody gets monologues except for the bad guy at the end. <laughs> and so I started thinking, I was like, how am I going to get a monologue? I'm never going to get a role that requires a monologue, especially at this stage. So what if I just wrote one? And then I wrote blisters. And I was like, I can write this. And then what if I shot it like a short film? And it's just me talking to a horse on paper. And then talking with Chris Foster and with you guys, with everybody else, it, it became a short film. But yeah, that all started with Randall Duck Kim saying I needed a monologue. Isn't that crazy? But see, it's good that you can uh, like realize that. Yeah. Because yeah. there are plenty of people that will be like, this was totally my idea. Nobody influenced me at all. Isn't that I, I don't even understand that way of thinking. Maybe it's my like next level self deprecation. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe it's like uh, I don't know. You're, uh, you're you have you have common sense, Brian. You're not you don't have your head up your butt. That's all. That's true. That's true. It came out a long time ago. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. It's wild to think about like all these ideas and like you know they're all coming out soon that's the that's the weird part that's what's got me kind of like what is happening right now because things are getting finished and they're coming out and it takes so long we've been working on this audio drama for a year and a half victor well they say it takes 10 years of hard work to become an overnight success yeah i'm seeing that good lord blisters is not been over a year not that we're going to be an overnight success or anything but right. it, it, it takes a long time of hard work for it to pay off yeah yeah it seems that way and the worst, the worst part is I find is the learning. <laughs> yes, it's like can't we just can't we just do it? Can't we just matrix download this information to our brains and then just go for it? Yes, I that's, wish that's that's me with camping. That's me with like filming and photography. It's yeah, it's, and you don't know what you don't know. That's the worst part. So you're like, this is gonna be a learning experience. I just don't know what I'm gonna learn. Is it? Are you good at like? I don't want to say learning, but like allowing yourself to learn. Like, you know, I don't, I don't give myself a lot of grace to fail. You know, are you, are you good at that? For me, I've, I've, maybe it's helped the more that I'm like alone by myself in the woods, but I've sure. really uh, been trying to figure out how the way that I expect things to happen really influences uh, like my mood or whether I accept it or not. Oh, that um, makes sense. Like if I if I'm expecting this day to be an easy day and I'm expecting to get everything I need on my list done and nothing unexpected is going to come up mm -hmm. and then something unexpected does come up. I'm super pissed. Uh, I'm not I'm not happy, even if that's a good moment to learn something or a good moment to connect with someone. I was not expecting that. And now I'm upset. Sure. Um, sure. If I can start my day and be like, I have no idea what's going to happen and I'm going to be open to whatever comes my way and. You know, if I have to take a detour, I'll take a detour. If I'm late for lunch, I'm late for lunch. If this happens, this happens, and I'm just going to roll with it. I am way more open to whatever happens, and I find, <laughs> like, 
so many more cool experiences in my day and I'll learn and I'll connect with people and I'll remember those memories. I'll remember the, those lessons better. Um, sure. so yeah, I, I'm trying to start instead of, instead of like in my mind, just be like, I expect to have breakfast, get this work done, get lunch, get this work done, go here, get the, instead of I'll start my day and just go, I hope I can get these things done, but you know, I'll expect, uh, random things will happen. And that helps me learn more or be more open to experiences that makes sense what what came first was the authentic florida first or the camping first because i don't remember they're they're the same thing now but like did you how did first how did authentic florida start uh the pandemic yeah makes sense um uh yeah, I think I think I mean when I st- when I started doing authentic Florida stuff and like branded myself, mm-hmm. um, I always wanted to go camping, but when I started authentic Florida, it was in the middle of summer, right? So yeah. uh, I kept being like, I'm gonna go camping here, and people around me were like, just hold off a little bit. Buddy. <laughs> no one's gonna find you after you have a heat stroke. <laughs> yeah, like listen, you haven't gone camping in how many years? Just hold off for now, right. <laughs> just for a little bit, buddy. Um. So instead, it was just like uh, full daytime hikes, and we're we're spoiled down here in South Florida. Oh yeah. Um, uh, the the more that I travel around the state, and the more that I go to other state parks and everything, the more that I realize that the Everglades and the Fakahatchee and what we have right here is super rare, um, and is huge compared to all the other state parks. Really? So I had plenty, like plenty of trails, plenty of adventures to go on just down here within an hour, an hour and a half away from where we live. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that that's what it mostly started. It was the pandemic happened. Um, I, I was actually at first going to be like, all right, well, let me just start cranking out manuscripts and I'll start sending them to publishers. And then publishers released information that was like, we're not buying manuscripts because we don't know what the future is. Uh, <sighs> and I was like, all right, not doing that. Never mind. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had money saved up. Uh, I have watched a lot of nature that we have down here get bought up and developed in the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, where I used to live out in the estates, it's like a bustling city now. Really? Um, I like we never used to go out there. There used to be a scorpion field next to my house. What? Um, <laughs> we have scorpions there used to down be, here. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that. There used to be this like ancient orange tree that was taller than like any house, any palm tree out there. There used to be such like crazy wild world out there. Um, and now it's like Publix is five minutes away. Go to a movie theater. Damn. There's a shopping mall over there. Um, so I, I wanted to document a lot of places that I love or that I think uh, are probably going to disappear. Um, yeah. Whether we want them to or not. Um, and yeah, I want people to like see that nature. I have so many friends that don't even know what the 10,000 islands are. And they're right. less than an hour away and one of the most unique ecosystems on the planet. Um, so I, I want, yeah, I want to fill the internet with, with positive nature. So that way when a politician comes by and says, hey, let's turn this into apartment complexes, people are like, no, that's actually pretty cool. That's, yeah. Like, that's a, that's a natural spring. Like, let's not turn that into an apartment. That's actually really kind of... Th- I don't know. It's like education. It's like awareness. The more people know about it, maybe the more people will want to keep it around. Right. It almost becomes like a, a conservation effort. Yeah, like in in a in a totally independent sort of way. Yeah, it's it's I want people to see this stuff. It brightens my day. Maybe it'll brighten other people's day. Um and yeah, there's a lot of weird places in Florida that no one gets around to. Dude, the Fakahatchee is the freaking coolest place. It's like you're in another world when you go to some of these places. And I just like, that's why I want someone to go out hiking with me just so that when we come across some wild thing and they turn and look at me, I can just nod and go, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not, that's actually real. That's not surreal. That's real. Sure. What? I'm that guy, Victor. Yeah. Well, I, Hey, there's uh, a <laughs> plenty of abandoned, weird, cool forests places we can go check out, man. We still need to go to that missile silo. I, uh, yeah, definitely, um, it's, 
I don't want to drive two and a half hours over there just to like find that it's actually pretty well protected by yeah. rangers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it's, a good point. It's supposed to be like open during a season and and closed when it's off season and like the way that you get there is kind of a little sketchy. So I I'm really trying to like plan it out when I have a a, a good while. My my goal was to go stay with family in Miami because then I'm only like thirty minutes away from it. Right, right. Okay. Uh, and then I have like a base of operations. Yeah. But again, <laughs> test pandemic. the parameters. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't realize the the pandemic just made you essentially want to get out. And then you're like, okay, all right, how do we do this? And then you just on basically on a whim and then love for nature is what sort of spun this. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, I, I need to get away from people. I need to do something productive. I uh, bought a bunch of cameras um, and I just started showing people nature. I figured I would do this for like the rest of 2020 and then I would see where I was at at the end of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um and if uh, if I had managed to both educate and entertain people, uh, then maybe I could find a way to like somehow profit off of this. Sure. Um, uh, do this, uh, really like invest my time in it and make YouTube videos on a regular schedule and try and bring in ad revenue and try and uh, write and try and blog and try and submit articles to like nature outlets. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't think I've gained enough like followers or gained enough attention in the year. So I don't know where I'll go at the end of the year. Sure. Um, sure. We'll, we'll see. But either way, I, yeah, I love camping. I love the outdoors. Um, Florida's super unique, so I want to show it to people. And that's why I wanted to go out in the summer and in, in hard times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to prove to myself that I can do it. And I want to show people places that most people don't go. Sure. Um, Cause the, the different side of Florida, because everyone just thinks of like you know the resort sort of beaches type of thing, but that's yes. not really Florida. Yeah, like like it's either nightlife of Tampa or Orlando, or it's the beaches. Um, and so yeah, I want to show people the cool forests and the mangroves and all the weird animals and plant life and yeah, like I guess my Florida, because I don't even go to the beach that much. Right. Or, Me neither. Like, like, yeah, I like, like nightclub. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. I'll say it. I don't like the beach. Monique loves it. I'm like, uh, you know, Anakin Skywalker was right when he said it about, about sand. I'll I'll die on that hill with him. It's yeah. Okay. Coarse and rough and irritating. It gets everywhere. It's the worst. It's yeah. <laughs> the 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 last two places that I've been camping, even though you're way north in Florida, in the middle of the forest, there will be it, it's uh, sand hills. Oh. Um. So you'll just you'll just be clomping through like beach sand and you're in the middle of a forest and you're like, this sucks. Shoes are <laughs> filling up with sand. It's like harder to walk. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Why is this here? <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. So then you, you have this idea for the conservation. You have this idea for showing the authentic Florida and yep. then you decide, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to really do this camping thing. So, how was your first time camping since childhood, I imagined? Um, it was... Uh, a lot of people, again, were kind of, when I was telling them, I'm going to go camping for five days in the middle of summer by myself. A lot of people were like, ooh, sure about that, Victor? <laughs> um, and I would keep telling them, I know it's going to be a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, and I, w- I would keep telling them, like, I'm going to go with an open mind. I'm going to go and have no idea what I'm going to experience and and just be learning. Um, I figured I wouldn't even get that much footage or pictures because a lot of times I would be like just figuring out how to camp. Sure. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of time consuming, um, breaking down my, my tent and figuring out, uh, apparently not all charcoal is created equal. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. and laughs> like, uh, just how to, how to handle horse flies, how to handle mosquitoes, um, the the first time I went camping was uh, a learning, a, uh, an experience. <laughs> it was 103 degrees, Brian. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I learned. I I like. So I spent so much time learning to camp in hot weather, and then the past two times I've gone camping has been below freezing, and it's just <laughs> thrown me completely out of my element. Um. Yeah, uh, the the first time I went camping. I realized that my tent really is a sauna. Um, oh boy. Because 
uh, I had a box of protein bars in there. And when I went to pick up the box, the cardboard just uh, like melted in my hand, just ripped apart in my hand. Sheet. That's the humidity. But, Nobody yeah, talks about no. that either with Florida. <laughs> Yeah, that Jeez. was that was bad. I lost like all the medicine I brought with me. Oh um, no! I lost uh, food. I lost uh, any any paper that I brought with me. I brought like an entire notebook was just became soggy and all the ink ran. What? Um, it was literally like I put my stuff in water um, after keeping it in my tent. Just in yeah. your tent. Yeah, but I mean, my tent had no shade. But still, and it was 103 degrees out. It just cooked your stuff. It, I had to refill my cooler with ice twice a day when I was out there. What? And that was your first time? <laughs> that was my first time camping. What a, what a trial by fire, pun intended. Yeah. Sheesh. It's the kind of hot where just cooking your breakfast, you sweat through your jeans and sure. all your clothes. And you kept going. What? Oh, yeah. What, what was that like? Because you, I feel like we're very similar in just like... In a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. That, like, you know, we, we have that, like, stubbornness almost. That, like, when we decide something, there's nothing that's going to stop us from doing it. And then when we hit hardship, we almost take it as a challenge to see what we're made of. Like, I, I don't think we're afraid to put ourselves to the test. And I feel right. like that's something that we we connect on. And so when you are when you decide, all right, I'm going to go camping, was going alone always, like, was that important at the beginning? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you... I don't remember which writer said it, but there's a quote that is, "You don't know what kind of a man you are until you spend a night alone in the woods." I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not always alone because there's a, a good number of campers near me. But yeah, I wanted to. I guess yeah. I mean, you just kind of described it. When there's a challenge, you kind of rise to see what you're made of. Yeah. Um, like you asked me earlier, how did you get through that? I don't know, but I did, and now I'm more confident because of it. Yeah, I. My favorite Carrie Fisher quote. She says uh, it, it comes up all the time. It says, uh, "Be afraid, but do it anyway. The confidence will follow." Yes. Yes. And I live by that. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I. Uh, one of the one of the psychologists that talks about uh, fear that I listen to. He says like when I help people with fear, I don't lessen their fear. What I do is I uh, strengthen their bravery. Um, oh, I like that. Because I'm not going to like their fear is legitimate. That that's a legitimate fear that they have. I'm not going to minimize that. They could die from that. That that's very true. Right. But what my job is is to make their courage stronger than that fear. Yeah. I love that. I love so, that. And, uh, and it it, yeah. sa it says a lot about you as a person though because you find out what you're made of, right? And then you decide from there was all of my stuff including myself being cooked through the humidity of the air was that enough for me and you're like well okay this was one experience and then you went back so like what what <laughs> what did you do differently from the first time to the second time i brought a bigger fan um, <laughs> i invested in a much bigger fan smart that could blow my entire tent uh yeah, I mean, I yeah, it was a learning a learning experience. So I brought a better cooler. I brought uh, a separate cooler just for my medicine. I brought uh, food in plastic bags instead of cardboard stuff. Um, I didn't bring a notebook. I kept anything that could melt in my car because for some reason it didn't melt as bad in my car. Oh. Um, y y tiny little things. There's still like a hundred things that go wrong every trip that sure. I learn or that I have to adjust on. But yeah, little 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 changes little things you pick up do differently little next things time. here and there and you go, okay well i won't do that next time okay let me buy a bunch of rubber bands and that'll help me uh, figure out this problem next time and all right i'll bring a lot of extra towels to help wipe off my tent in the morning because apparently do is a thing yeah um yeah yeah and so it there's pools. it pu <laughs> here's the here's the the crappy thing of the last uh the last campsite um woke up it was nice in the morning. Um, I was there was there's no dew, no clouds in the sky. It was beautiful. I was Ooh. like, all right, I'm gonna tear down the tent. I'm gonna throw out everything in my car, and then I'm gonna go hiking for the rest of the day. It'll be the last day, and then once I hike for a bunch of hours, then I'll head home. Um, I'm just cooking breakfast. Breakfast is good. I eat breakfast. I start packing up, and then in my tent, as I'm cleaning things up, I just start hearing like drizzling on my tent. Oh no! Like, how is this possible? What's happening? There's no rain, and I go out and I realize. 
all the dew froze on the trees above my tent. <laughs> and as the sun came out and warmed it up, the dew was melting off. Dew was melting for like two hours. I couldn't pack up a tent at all. <laughs> God dang it, man. Look, I didn't know that, but you learn new things. Yeah. Yeah. The hard way, usually, I find. <laughs> usually the hard, frustrating way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there, how did you come up with like four to five days? Why four to five days? Um, setting up camp takes some time and I didn't want to like set up camp just for one or two nights. That makes sense. Um, and I, I much prefer the longer trips. Uh, the shorter trips are easier. I can get a bunch more in, in a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I much prefer the longer trips because then you actually feel, you actually get the sense of that forest. Right. Um, you get to actually feel like, all right, this is what this wood is. I understand the animals here. I understand the climate. Like I get, I don't know, each, maybe I'm an old hippie now or like a literal <laughs> tree hugger. But I, yeah, when I, when I go to sleep out there, I'm, I'm much happier being right next to the forest. I don't want to be in an air conditioned camper that's so loud. I forget that I'm here in nature. Sure. Um, I want it to be accessible. There's so many cool times that I've woken up in the night and just watched awesome animals pass through my tent or might pass through my campsite. Really? Uh, I, I, I like that. I like being accessible to the forest and having the forest accessible to me. Um, sure. When you're when I it. pick a camp. Yeah. When I pick a campsite, I always make sure that my campsite backs up to the biggest part of the forest. So that way, if any animal is likely to, come up it's probably to one of my campsites or near me um sure and that way you know when no one's looking i might just uh wander off in the woods there you go that's so but. cool i love that it's like a it's like a primal sort of almost spiritual experience where you get out of the like i don't know if human's the right word but i'll just use it like the human mentality of like we're a part of this society we're doing all these things but when you're in nature it's like there's nothing outside of what's right in front of you. you yes. Know? That's, and l like I said earlier, like you don't know what kind of a, are you, let me modify, you don't know what kind of a person you are until you spend a night alone in the woods. Yeah. Um, like uh, w one thing that I enjoy doing is turning my mind off and just walking at night into the woods. Yeah. Um, and just walking for like 10, 15 minutes, just turn my mind off, not think about what's happening or, you know, that I'm just walking into a dark wood um, <laughs> and just walk for like 10 or 15 minutes. And after 10 or 15 minutes, turn my mind on and just see where I am um, and use all my senses to feel this area, to, to look at the moon and the stars and feel the breeze and feel the soil and the tree bark and uh, smell the vegetation. Because I feel like that's what we as a species have mostly experienced throughout our entire history. Sure. Um and only recently are we surrounded by concrete walls and internet and, and TV and air conditioning and have all these cool comforts. But like the majority of our human history, we've been right there with nature. Yeah. Um, and I, I want that connection. I, that's the, that's what I'm looking for when I go out there. Sure. It, it's, it almost sounds like a form of meditation you're going through out there. 100%. Um, so cool. Uh, a, a lot of times when I'm walking, um, if if my cameras are in my backpack or if my cameras aren't on, I will really try to um, make sure that my mind is right there in that forest. Sure. Um, like a lot of times you'll be hiking and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I got to get back and read that script and I got to email those people and I don't know what I'm going to do with that when uh, she shows up or what's going to happen here. <laughs> So when I'm in the forest, I, I try to like uh, I'll, I'll run my fingertips across anything that's kind of close by. Um, if there's a boardwalk or if there's a tree or if there's leaves or something, and I'll just keep telling myself, I'm here. This is where I am. I'm in this moment. There's that bird. There's that tree. There's that sunlight. There's that rock. I'm right here. I'm not a week from now. I'm not a week past. I'm right here. Sure. And then the only thing that my mind is recording is the sound of my footsteps um, or, or the, the wind or the birds. And there's n like nothing else in my mind. And yeah. After walking like that and you make it back to camp or you make it back to the park, it's like you're cleaner. Yeah, you're empty. So, yeah, it's 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 definitely 
there's plenty of times that I wish uh, someone else could join me to help me uh, clean up after cooking or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's also plenty of times that I am, I'm like, I, I would not trade that experience for anything. I'm, I'm very happy that I'm out there by myself. Yeah, I bet it, it, it's, do you, how often do you go camping and then you come back feeling different? Um, like, do you most ever, of the you, times? Yeah. Yeah. Like you notice a change. I'm sure mentally, how can you not? Yeah. Um, I have, I have better dreams when I'm out there. Really? Um, That's cool. I, I, I've, I think I've only ever come back and, and I feel like been the same or like jumped right back into my old shoes only once because I had a bad camping trip. Sure. And I was like, oh, this sucks. I can't wait to get back home. Um, but yeah, I think every time I come back, like, yeah, you know, like traveling broadens your horizons. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, I feel like every and every time I'm there, I'm usually looking up history of that park or of that forest. Oh um, yeah. So when I come back, it's uh, yeah, it's I've seen a, a different part of Florida. I've conquered another uh, another forest. Uh, every every night that I go to sleep in a tent is a night that I'm I'm proving a younger me wrong. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 good. It's good regardless of uh, what happens from here on out. It's very good. I love that. I love that. And I love like hearing stories about overcoming hardship. You know, I'm all about it. We've we've talked about that before amongst ourselves. Yeah. And like, yeah, I don't know. It, it's like a special transformative experience to test yourself and to come out on the other side. You know, and like, yeah. you know, I always say all the time, like, even when something bad's happening, like, it's going to be a great story when it's over. And th that's yes. the key, you know, I find. Yeah, I mean, th at the very least, that's the silver lining. Yeah, <laughs> that's what helps me through hard times. A lot of it. I'm like, this sucks, but it's going to be a great story when it's over. Yeah. And or I always think uh, someone else is having it worse right now. Oh, yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, it's it's helpful for me when I'm out there and I'm thinking like, oh, woe is me, or oh, I have to do so much. It goes well. At least I'm not this who has limited mobility. Uh, right. I'm, at least I'm not this that has uh, this issue that they wouldn't even be able to be out here. So I should be thankful that I can do this because it could be a lot worse. Sure, it gives you perspective at the very least. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. What has been the coolest thing you've seen so far while camping? I'll, I'll, the, I'll, you're allowed a few if you can't bring it down to one uh i mean the coolest things i i haven't don't say the snake thing don't the snow oh, <laughs> the uh like the cotton mouth snake the um, friggin that and the one eating the frog you ruined my day Victor. Kinda, you ruined yeah. my day honest dude brian i walked away from that apologizing to the frog <laughs> yeah <laughs> When that when I saw that ha so yeah I saw a picture of a I caught a picture of a snake uh, eating a frog on a tree branch. Um, it was a big snake, and I didn't know like when I was walking up I didn't know what was screaming like I didn't know what was chirping. Oh my it's like god. that's not a bird I've ever heard before. That's not a squirrel. What the hell? Oh my god! It's a frog dying. Um, no. And as I watched it happening, I remember telling myself, I'm like, I'm sorry, frog. I'm not going to help you. It's the circle of life. I'm sorry. Oh, it looks no. like the snake has you. I got, I'm sorry. And oh, then no. the snake kind of like lost his, his grip on it. And the frog was starting to get away. And I was like, oh, I, I might actually help you out, frog. Uh, okay. And I started looking for a way to get to the tree to help the frog. And by the time I looked back up, the frog was half swallowed by the snake. And I just went, all right, never mind. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tried <laughs> no. to help you circle of life. I'm sorry. And I just walked away. <laughs> no. I felt bad about that. <laughs> I felt bad looking at it. <laughs> it was in a tree? That's it was in what, a tree. I mean, that's, it's probably the biggest black racer I've seen. And it oh was perfectly, God. like, it was perfectly uh, coiled. So that way its body was evenly uh, hanging off of the side of this tree branch. It knew what uh, it was doing. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like the it. Other, I don't like it. I that uh the other picture of that uh venomous one the uh, yes. the, the cotton mouth in the leaves that was like on the ground. I am. The more I think about it, the more that I realize I'm very lucky. Very lucky in that circumstance. Um, How close were you to it? I was. 
uh, close enough that I would have almost stepped on it. Ah. Um, so ah. when I was when I was hiking that trail, I had lost my GoPro. Um, oh no! My GoPro was on my gimbal, and I put my gimbal in my pocket, and my GoPro fell off of my gimbal at some point. Uh, so I spent like a mile and a half backtracking and going back and forth along this trail looking for it. Oh no! If I hadn't been scrutinizing the ground so well, I probably would not have seen that snake. Uh, ah. And I probably would have gotten too close to it. Um, honestly, I was pretty, like, once I saw him and I backed off and was taking pictures of him, he was still aggressive. Because that kind yeah. of snake can be territorial at times. Yeah. Um, Cottonmouths so, are no joke. I didn't realize it was a cottonmouth either at the time because I'm stupid. <sighs> I didn't realize there's two different kinds of cottonmouths in Florida. I know the name of every devil in Florida, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> like my entire life, anytime I'd seen a cottonmouth, got it. It's this black snake that has a very white mouth. Got it. It's in the water. Got it. Right. Apparently, there's a second kind of cottonmouth that looks more like a rattlesnake. I didn't uh, know that. Evil okay, takes many well, forms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Florida. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. I, 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 like I didn't it. realize there were so many poisonous plants in Florida as well. Really? I only know of the, I mean, poison ivy, obviously. And then I know a bunch of berries and stuff is poisonous. Oh, I, I mean, poisonous, not, I mean, poisonous, like, uh, like you eat it, you die. Oh, uh, yeah. I assume everything is that down here. <laughs> yes. I mean, the more that I do research, that's what's fun is doing research uh, uh, on, on all the stuff that I find and being like, oh, that's a cool flower. Let me look. Oh, it's a narcotic. Got it. Cool. Right. Uh, Oh, that's a cool caterpillar. Let me. Oh, that's one of the most poisonous insects in America. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's so awesome. Like, I want to share that to people and go, look at this cool thing. Sure. So there's a lot of cool things you've seen. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, one of the coolest moments. Um, I used to keep a list in, in like this little notebook that I have that's like, uh, it's, it's a list of, of moments that I'm glad I was alive for. Um, I love that. It's like it's like uh, like if I'm ever at a low point or if I'm ever kind of bummed, I can open up this list and be like, I'm because I've had those moments where I'm out in the woods and I just stop and I go, I am so glad that I lived to this moment to have this experience. Sure. And I don't want to forget. Um, one of the coolest moments uh, was going into the Fakahatchee. Um, I got there very early. I'm pretty sure I was the first car in there. Um I drove to a new trail that I had never been to before and I got out of my car and I heard what sounded like the air brakes on like an 18 wheeler. Oh. Um, like, uh, like, like I thought I heard like a semi truck braking and I was like, Oh, I guess I'm a little bit closer to uh, 41 than I thought. Mm -hmm. and I grabbed my camera and then I stopped for a second and I was like, no, I'm 11 miles into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> what the hell was that sound? It's and the more that I stood there, yeah, the more that I stood there and listened, the more that I realized it was the largest and loudest gator I had ever heard. What? And as he started bellowing, the entire forest started bellowing back with other gators. Like, Sheesh. Like this dude was the king and every other gator was like checking in real quick. Like the... And I wrote it down in my list. Uh, it's called uh, Listening to the Sleeping Giants in Fakahatchee. Um, <laughs> because that gator, it, every like every breath that he took, he exhaled. And it was 30 seconds of him breathing. I He must really? have been super far away from me. He must have been so far away from me. But he was so loud and it was so deep that it was rumbling the whole force. And I just stood there for like, a minute and just listen to it all and it was the coolest thing man do you run into gators a yeah. bunch i hear gators a bunch yeah um i like uh, my, my my grandpa always says they're more afraid of you than you are of them yeah yeah i'm not um, afraid of alligators at all is that weird no because you're floridian yeah yeah you're i mean <laughs> yeah. most gators you can like kick at it and it'll leave like most gators you can kind of like jer jerk at it and it'll be like okay let me get out of here yeah it's only when the gator's bigger than you that when you do that and the gator's like you can piss off human like, exactly or during mating season that's when they get territorial yes 
that's what I tell. Yeah. When I go out hiking and people are like, look out for gators. I go, look, uh, I, I'm I'm always looking at the water. It's not mating season. Like that's pretty much the only time that you're in trouble. Yep. We're okay. Yep. <laughs> did you see that video of that guy who saved his dog? I did. <sighs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what my mom likes to do is my mom likes to show me videos of like worst case scenarios in Florida right after I get back from a hike. <laughs> um, this is what you avoided. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, I got back from the Fakahatchee one day after a hike, and the following day she sent me a video of someone being air rescued from the Fakahatchee the day before. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Got it. I will be careful the next time I'm out there. Yeah, so she sent me this video, and she was like, "You just remember, because I know you're going to go kayaking out there, just remember that they're... And I'm like, yes, I got it. I will not bring a small dog that looks very edible next to me. Yeah. <laughs> that was... One of, you know what's really funny? So the first, because the video that I saw, it started with him already in the water. And you're like, what is going on here? Okay. All right, what's going on? All right. And then he lifts this thing up. You just hear this guy, rah, rah, and then you hear the yelping. And I was like, what is going on? Oh, my God. And it was a two-part thing. One thing was, that's the most badass thing I've seen in a very long time. Because he kept the cigar <laughs> in his mouth the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> what a boss and then he pulls this thing and the dog gets saved thank god because i don't have a i don't have the stomach for stuff like that um yeah but the second thing and this was probably because again i you know I've, I've lived in florida since i was six um so the second thought i had was well that gator's not that big <laughs> yes <laughs> that's your pr you've probably held a gator that big i have i've held one slightly bigger than that <laughs> yeah that's what i mean yeah, yeah. There's, no, I, I mean, have pictures of holding like a four foot one, and I'm like, that's that's a little, that's a little guy, it's a little guy. Still, that's impressive. The guy jumped in the water, found the gator in the water, and actually pried its mouth open. Yeah, that's where the strength is. I, you know what? That's why I'm not yes. afraid of alligators. Knowing that I can hold, theoretically, I can hold their mouth shut with my hands. Knowing yeah. that, it's like I'm not afraid of anything with an exoskeleton because I'm like, you're just goo. I just <laughs> handled. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah, but it's just yeah. so it, that was nuts. Well, so you asked like what what's the coolest things I've encountered out there? Yeah. Um one of the strangest things that I've encountered out there Ooh. Uh, would be literally just yesterday morning. Really? Um uh in Oleno State Park. Um okay. which honestly, real quick, coolest coolest thing there's this river called the Santa Fe River that goes into this park, oh. and then it just stops, and it goes underground for three miles. What? And then it comes back up in another park called River Rise, where it just it comes out of the ground, and it's crystal clear because it's been going through these caves underground for three miles, and, like, it, it's awesome. No way. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> there's, Weird. like, really cool features up there. Yeah. Anyway, so I was hiking this uh, Santa Fe River. Um... And I found a really large skeleton. What? Go on. I don't know, like, an, another way to, like, broach that subject. I found a skeleton <laughs> that's of a large creature. Um, like a humanoid creature? Its spinal cord was the size of my spinal cord. What? Uh, really? Its rib cage would have been about the size of my rib cage. Wow. Uh, it was a it, there was it was a it was a good number of bones and they had been there for a while and they were big bones. Um, really, and uh, I took a lot of pictures of it. I took a lot of video because sweet. I didn't know what I was looking at and I want the internet to help me out here. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Is this a crime scene? Am I seeing a crime yes. scene? <laughs> yes, I I need the uh, the sleuths of the internet to look at that and be like, oh, that's a wolf's uh, corpse. I can see that because the the ribs they bend this way, and you can see the little notch on the third vertebrae. That means, yeah. Okay. yeah Either way, of course. <laughs> yes. mm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, finding finding skeleton finding skeletal remains is always a uh, always makes you a little spooky. Yeah, abandoned houses you found. That's pretty cool. Banded houses. I I never full send it when I find them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I, I've I've read too many horror stories to just go like walking right into an abandoned house you find in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Um. I totally would have. Yeah. Done I, it. 
I, 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 yeah, I, I definitely like explore, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not just like walking right in and being like, well, let's find out what Kurtz is on this place. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why it's best that I'm not at all of your trips because I'd be like, Victor, we're going in there. Grab a stick. <laughs> I mean, Brian, what I want some, what I want someone there for is so that when I go in the abandoned hotel that's in the Everglades, I want someone to tie a rope to my belt, and if something <laughs> happens, they can just drag me out. Yeah. <laughs> you need a safety net. That's it. Like, I, I don't need someone to go into the scary places with me. I just need them to be by the car <laughs> so in case things go wrong, they can do something. That's right. You need a witness. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's funny. It, is the Fakahatchee your favorite? I would probably say that the Fakahatchee is my favorite. Um, Jonathan Dickinson State Park is a close second. Yeah. Um, but so far, Fakahatchee, it's just, it's the biggest in the state. It's the biggest state park in Florida. Um, it's the largest cypress strand in the state of Florida. Uh, it has, it's connected to like so many greenways. It has all the animals, turkeys, bears, bobcats, panthers, gators, eagles hawks it's got it's huge there's so many different trails you can go on um yeah and it's it's wild florida it's like one of the only places in florida where you may get so lost that they have to send a chopper and air rescue you um, <laughs> and that's that's the feeling that i want i don't want to be i hate being in a state park and being in the middle of the forest and still hearing traffic yeah um, good point and and still hearing airplanes overhead and hearing traffic. And I can hear someone who owns private property. That's pretty close by. They're playing music. I hate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the, in the fact, Kahachi, you are in God's country. Uh, and that's what I want. Understandable. You are so. alone, alone, alone. Yeah. Alone. Yes. Alone. <laughs> alone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right on, right on. So what, I mean, days are long when you don't have, you know, a million things to do. So, like, how? What's an average day like when you're out? When you're out there? When I'm out camping or, yeah. or just hiking? Uh, let's do both. Uh, with hiking, it's uh, it depends on kind of what mode I'm in. Like, I have three, I have two or three different modes when I'm out there hiking. One is goal oriented. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lake that I want to hit, and therefore I'm moving along. Um, and as I'm humming along, I don't really stop to take many pictures, um, or, or video. Uh, the, the second mode is kind of, I have a goal in mind, but I'm totally fine with just like stopping and exploring. And the third one is full wander. Uh, like, I don't, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'll end up. We'll see what happens. Um, sure. When, when I'm, when I'm out there hiking with a goal in mind, my day's pretty structured. I'm going to hit this lake by 12. I'm going to be back by three. I'm going to cook um, uh, and, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll charge up my batteries in the evening. Um, I don't know, like, uh, like a, a regular day out there um, hiking is you look at the trails the night before. You get an idea of what the park looks like or what the forest looks like. Um, just in case a worst case scenario happens. Um, you, you know where you are at all times. And then when the morning comes, you pack a bunch of hydration, uh, pack a couple of protein bars for lunch, make sure all your batteries are charged, you have all your SD cards, um, and you set out. Um, mm -hmm. when, when I'm camping, uh, it's the same thing. It's just the day starts with bacon and eggs over a campfire. Um, Love it. And uh, I have to make sure to refill my cooler with ice. Otherwise, all my meat goes bad. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, usually when I get back at nighttime, that's why sometimes I wish there was like a second person with me just to help with stuff. Sure. Just you, you have to clean all, everything, cooking everything, prepping everything, and then looking over footage, making sure the batteries are good, um, getting drone camera, looking at the trails for the following day. Um, there's usually if there's downtime, there's, it's, it's not much, or I'm reading, um, mm -hmm. or I'm like responding to people online on social media. Sure. Um, but, uh, I, you, uh, there's not like an average day when I'm out there. Cause I guess I haven't really found my full groove yet. 
Sure. Um, plus, yeah, my groove has totally changed in that sense I'm camping in below freezing temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. What what do you so what do you, you're having bacon and eggs for breakfast every morning? Protein bars for yes. lunch? Yes. What are you having for supper? Uh I slap some chicken and veggies on the grill usually. Love it. Um yeah, it's uh it's healthy, it's pretty simple. Um I bring my own uh seasons and spices out there. Um douse everything in olive oil, toss it right on the barbecue. Let it sit for 20 minutes and wonder what the heck I'm doing out there. <laughs> Why is it so cold? How can I be less <laughs> <Why> is... cold? <laughs> People will walk by and be like, stay warm tonight. And I'll be like, ha ha, yeah, thanks. Right. From in your camper, I get it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. You can take a shower in your camper. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> like where I go, there's a, a usually a bathhouse that uh, maybe services 30 or so camp campsites. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, those bathhouses, they're not air conditioned or heated. They're, they're kind of just open to the elements. Sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, going, going to, going to the bathroom in the morning on a toilet seat. That's 32 degrees. <laughs> you not see what enjoyable. kind of person you are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You wake right up. Oh man. So what, when you're, when you're preparing for a camping trip, walk me through your inventory. What what are you packing? What's what are the essentials? What are things that you recommend? Talk to me. Hmm. Uh, so I bring a tarp. Put my tarp down when I first get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bring my tent, which is a big, nice weather master tent. Um, uh, a lot of people think I am fully roughing it, but I'm not when I'm out there. I have like a, I mean, I'm in a state park and I have a campsite. There's a little. A power box in the back end of my campsite that I can plug an extension cord into. Okay. Um, okay. And then I I lead that into my tent, and then I plug a little power strip into that in my tent, uh, and that's how I can charge all my batteries, charge my phone. Smart. Um, there's a little spigot of water next to that power outlet, so I can wash my, like my grill, I can wash my utensils right there. Mm-hmm. Um. So, if you're camping in state parks, uh. It's not that different from just like camping. I mean, being in a hotel, it's very different. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, Some people might push bring, back on that, Victor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, I bring a sleeping bag, uh, a sleeping mat that goes under my sleeping bag because uh, I don't like sleeping on gravel that much. It's a little Fair. difficult. Um, I bring a backpack that has all my electronics, and it's kind of like my survival backpack. Um it has a survival knife strapped to the side. It has flashlight in it, electrical tape, uh, first aid kits, mosquito repellent, um, <laughs> pamphlets about like uh, ecology in Florida, uh, environments, animals you might run into, tracks. Um, but in that, I usually keep all my cameras, my GoPro, my stands, my gimbal, my microphone. Um, if I can fit it, my drone. Um, mm mm-hmm. I will bring a second backpack that has my laptop, that has all my chargers, extra batteries. Um, I will bring a cooler that has meat, bacon, eggs, and uh, two liters of water every day and two sports drinks every day. Smart. Um, Hydration is very important. Learn that the hard way. (laughs) Uh, I bring a duffel bag that has all my clothes in it. Um, and I always bring extras just in case bad things happen. Again, mm-hmm. learned the hard way. Yeah, um, yeah. I bring a bucket that has uh, a griddle so that way I can cook my bacon and eggs. It has uh, all my barbecue utensils. It has a light that I hang from the top of my tent at nighttime. Um, it has a big fan because it's hot, but now it's really cold. So... I will be putting a space heater in there instead with some propane cans. Um, sure. Just be careful. Tents are very flammable. Tents are flammable, and I don't want to suffocate in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, heating blanket. I have a big like uh, Publix reusable bag that has uh, all my cooking stuff in it. 
Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So whenever it's time to cook, I just grab that bag, put it next to my barbecue, and I know that everything's in there. Um, and that's uh, I bring a big bag of charcoal, extension cord, power cord. Uh, I maybe bring a couple of self defense items. Smart. Um, that's a. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. About, I mean, yeah, but when I first went, there was more. Oh really? Um, yeah. When I, I mean, I used to take two coolers. I used to take like three backpacks, um, two duffel bags. Uh, yeah, I used to take. I, I I used to do an air mattress, but I hate air mattresses. Oh. <laughs> um, like I just yeah, I would rather just do the sleeping bag on the ground. Um, yeah. Than the air mat, and that, that that used to be a while. My my parents used to want me to take a cot with an air mattress and everything. I said no, no thanks. So, um, <laughs> I've I've whittled it down. It used to be when I packed up my car, you couldn't see out the rearview mirror. Um, and the car was driving like a tank, like it was heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now, now I'm I can throw camping. everything in the trunk. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, <laughs> I saw Andrew one time and he was like, are you living out of your car now? What is this? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but yeah, a little bit. Yeah. To for, a degree. Yeah. But only for like I five am. days. At a time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Only, yeah. For the next four days. And that's it. Um, yeah, I bring uh, flip flops so I can take a shower and not walk around bare feet in other people's shower water. Oh, uh, smart! Never thought of that. I bring a lot of towels because it rains a lot when I'm out there, and dew usually doesn't dry on my tent in the morning. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to fold up a tent, and there's even just a little bit of water because it'll smell, it'll mold. Yeah. Um, so I bring a lot of towels. Uh. I bring these little incense sticks that are the best thing to keep mosquitoes away. Oh. Uh, Very important. I bring, yes, uh, I bring a high-powered laser pointer. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Because that's actually a good way to get a lot of predatory animals distracted from eating you. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, it sounds weird. It sounds stupid. But I have seen panthers and gators be far more concerned with a weird laser pointer than <laughs> like a person. Um, so yeah, I bring a couple of flashlights, laser pointer, a couple weird oddities, I suppose. Sure. Um, but that's about it. Maybe, maybe a book. Uh, if I feel like I'm going to be out there for a good couple of days, bring a book so I can read. If it's super, sometimes it's so hot in the afternoon. I don't go hiking. Mm -hmm. Um, I only hike in the morning and then from like two to four or one thirty to four, I, I put my fan on in my tent and I'll just read or I'll try and edit pictures or something for a while. Um, right on. But yeah, that's, I guess that's about the average day. It's about my inventory list. Not bad. Not bad at all. You sound prepared. Yeah, you sound like someone who's been camping more than once and learned to more than once <laughs> acclimate. I, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I like it. I'm, 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 I'm finding my groove. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. It only gets easier from there. What? I hope so. <laughs> What's been your worst camping day so far? I don't want to bring up the uh, PTSD, but <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I was gonna say I've had like a, I've had, a, I've essentially had an altercation in every single oh, park. No. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. <laughs> I've, I've, I think I've only had one camping trip where I made like really good friends that were across from me. Um, and like pretty much every other camping trip, I've had some confrontation or some altercation with someone. Um, it's the people, right? <laughs> you go into nature and the problems you find are people. <laughs> Brian, the people ruin it so much. I can't. Yeah, I bet. I cannot express like if if anything's gonna ruin my trip, it's not gonna be me. It's gonna be people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Knowing you, that sounds about right. <laughs> the worst like camping experience I had was uh, my campsite got completely flooded one time. Oh no! Um, like you woke up in water. Like I saw a storm was coming, and so I hunkered down in my tent and I 
put everything like kind of off the ground a little bit just in case things got a little wet. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I had just finished cooking dinner and I was eating dinner and I watched one part of the canopy over my tent. It seemed to be leaking. I was just watching water just come right through. Oh, no. Uh, And yeah, it turned out my canopy after sitting in our garage for a couple of years was now not waterproof. Oh, Um, no. That's and that's all you like all out there. Uh, my entire duffel bag of clothes was soaked. Um, all my batteries were floating in water. Uh, my power strip was floating in water. Um, all my food, all uh, like yeah, all my maps. It was bad. Um, oh no, that was a that was a bad experience. I lost I lost a, a good bit of money of equipment in that experience, but I got a new tent afterwards. Um, probably best and that that was uh that's that's probably the the worst like uh every time i go out camping now i remember that and i plan for that right um, right because it, it's not going to get that worse it's never going to be that worse in my opinion sure um, it that was that was bad i had nothing like my tent was soaking wet and i had to leave the next morning and i sent a video to my parents that was just like this tent sucks <laughs> and it it wasn't until the water was over my ankles and every step that I took was sloshing around in water that I was like, forget this. I'll sleep in my car. I'm calling it. I'm just going to like grab my laptop and a few things that aren't ruined and I'll stay in my car for the rest of the night. Um, sure. That was bad. The <sighs> like the worst, ex- the worst like moment while I was out camping um, was there was a a kid that was a bully that I kept stopping oh from bullying other people. Um, that's like, man, why do I have to parent your child? <laughs> Dude, parent your child. What are you doing, man? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, it's yeah. So at the bathhouse, uh, I found this kid bullying people like three different times. Um, uh, well, uh, one time I walked up and there were two kids outside and I asked them, Hey, what's going on? And they said, we think they're taking a shower. And as I walked up to the door, I could hear someone screaming inside. Uh, they were just screaming like, no, please stop. Uh, and I was like, either that's a good shower or a bad shower. Um, <laughs> and I kicked the door open and I found this little like 12 year old kid that was throwing, uh, wet paper towels and spitting over the stall at a kid that was, uh, in the bathroom stall. Oh boy. And as soon as I kicked that door open and that kid saw me, that kid bolted out of that, that bathroom. Sounds about um, right. And I turned around to the other kids that are outside. I was like, the coast is clear. And they were like, all right, thanks, mister. And they went in. And I found essentially that scene two other times. Really? Um, where I walked in on this kid. Either he had just uh, turned the lights off on someone who was showering in there. Um, or he was uh, running in with like wet clops of leaves and throwing them at people that were in the stalls. Yeah, it was bad. So on the last night that I was there, I knew I had to take a shower and I knew that this kid was going to screw with me. Oh, boy. We 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 knew each other's face. I knew his family was right next to the bathhouse and I knew they didn't care. That's why his that's why he was like running around in other people's campsites. He was like messing with other people's cars. Um, yeah, right. I knew. My entire shower, I was like, this kid, he's going to see me walking to the bathhouse, and he's going to do something. But you know what? I'm, I'm an adult, all right? <laughs> I'm smart, okay? I'm not going to let this kid get the best of me because I was a little brat when I was a kid. So I think, like this kid, I'm going to beat him. So my entire Physically. shower, yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> my, my entire shower, I am taught, I am so ready. I am 100% ready to fly buck naked out of this shower stall, grab that kid and <laughs> scream in his face. Like, I am so ready to traumatize this child for the rest of his life. Um, You've already I'm, prepared like, your court defense and everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can visualize it in my mind. He's going to be running away because he just turned off the light. I'm going to grab him by the shirt and the back of the hair, and I'm just going to scream and shake him. Like, I've got it. <laughs> Make my day, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am so ready. And it never happens. Ah, uh, probably and best. like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm putting my clothes on uh, at the end and I'm still, I'm still taught. I'm like, man, I really thought this kid would have like the second he had the chance. So I put my shirt on and it's right at that crucial moment 
when you're putting your uh, boxers on that you don't want to get your wet foot on your like boxers. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And the you old, can get the it old, wet. The old put the boxers on without getting them wet trick. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I've I've just ringed my undergarment so that way I can get my foot through. And right as my foot goes through, the lights turn off. Oh, he was playing the and long I game. S- stumble on my boxers and <laughs> oh, I like no. freaking curse and I rip open that shower stall and that kid's long gone. <laughs> I I break the bathroom door kicking it open. I'm so angry. Oh, no. He I walk you. out into <laughs> He put <played>, Brian. <laughs> that whole shower, I was so ready in the one moment I wasn't he beats me. <laughs> right? And we thought I, you were the smart one. <laughs> I was so ah, uh, I stood there outside the bathroom and nothing but t-shirt and boxers and so many people were looking at me. <laughs> And all I did was just glare at that kid's family. <laughs> they were all in on it. And then I, I, I walked back into the bathroom. I got I got changed. And the rest of that night, for, for the rest, I went on a long walk. And the rest of that night, I was just, I, I had to come to terms with myself that, like, I, I, I'm glad I didn't get my hands on, on that kid. Because <laughs> I would have, like, Liam Neeson in Taken. I would have just. I don't know who you are. If you're looking for clothes, I can tell you I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson in that movie, he doesn't throw like a single punch. He just like gets into people's guard and slams their head against the nearest solid object. <laughs> That's a crime, Victor. We've talked that... about this even in the yes. woods. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't want to become a Florida man where they were like, Florida man beats up a 12-year-old child because they That's turned right. off the lights on him while he was showering. That's right. <laughs> Oh, my God. I hope in... Well, I don't hope this, but I kind of hope this. In a few years, that all this time in the woods makes you into Florida Man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's my secret, Brian. I'm always Florida Man. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. That is hilarious. <laughs> it's See, it's a good story, but at that time, holy right. cow. <laughs> I have never been more angry in my life. I was he got so you, livid. He's so... Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you lost the battle of wits to a child, Victor. I, I spent that whole... Man, I walked in that shower like eager for that kid to, to mess with me. I was so ready. <laughs> and then I messed up. What you didn't realize was so was he. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards, I was thinking, I was like, was that kid watching me? Was he like waiting for the perfect moment? I bet he was. <laughs> man. That is a mastermind of a child. Yeah, I seriously underestimated my opponent there. <laughs> Chalk it up to the things you have learned. Yeah, and I, again, not the only confrontation I've had. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. What? So there's a yeah. <laughs> so, so go ahead. What do you? What kind of gear do you have as far as like for your authentic Florida stuff? Um, like uh, so do you have like, a GoPro. So I have a GoPro. I have a cool little gimbal that keeps everything nice and steady. Right um, on. I have a DSLR camera that honestly isn't that great. Sure. Um, but I would never used a DSLR before, and I didn't know photography, so I thought it was a good like entry camera. Why not? Um, I still shoot on a T2i. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it has all the features of a good professional DSLR that would cost normally like two thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, so I can learn actual photography. It just doesn't have like a, a super nice lens or sure. crazy shutter speed stuff. Um, and I have a drone. Uh, but I would recommend that if people want to go out and do photography stuff, that they just don't waste their money on drones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I You can get some incredible cool shots with a drone, but it's illegal to fly a drone like virtually anywhere. Oh, um, really? It, it, it's certainly in all the state parks, in all national forests, um, anywhere near buildings, residential areas. Um, it, so far, I've found pretty much the only place that I can fly are at community parks. Really? Um, so if there's a community park near a state park, I can lift off from there and kind of circle over the state park. Oh, but it's smart. It's really, it's been pretty much a waste. Like, uh, the only time I've been able to fly it is when I know there's absolutely nobody around, so I'm not going to get reported. Sure. <laughs> um, or when I'm in kind of a gray area, because there's some state parks that will say you can't uh, lift off or land a drone. Um, so you can f- 
fly a drone there, but you just can't lift off or land on property. So if you just like hike right off the property, you can fly it. Um, oh, okay, okay. I'm so into that. There's some yeah, there's some gray areas, but it's it's mostly uh it's I wouldn't chance it. Sure. Sure. Cuz the fines are hefty. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So not bad. Not bad. Things you learn, things you learn. Things you learn. And yeah, that's uh that's about it. Just uh two cameras or three if I can get the drone. Mm-hmm. Um a tripod, a gimbal, and honestly, if someone bought the latest iPhone, they would have a better camera than all my cameras combined. Sure. <laughs> I same. 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 It's it, it's kind of ridiculous the the kind of camera that's in those things nowadays, but uh yeah, that's that's what that's what I'm rolling with. Right on. For for your videos and stuff like that, do you go into them with the idea of what you want to make or do you just shoot a bunch of stuff and then craft it afterwards? Yeah, uh, the latter. Um, yeah. And I feel like that even takes a lot of time. Um, for sure. It would it would take, I can't imagine how much more time for me to actually plan out everything about a, a park and research it before I even get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And and then be like, oh yeah, this is this is what I'll do with this video. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's why I, I guess I'm I'm a little more proud of the videos when I complete them because I'm just shooting crap when I'm out there, and then when I come home, I look over everything and go, all right, what the heck am I gonna make from this? Right. Um, and and when a when a good video comes out or when a cool thing comes out, like I was kind of happy with the narration of the last one. Yeah, um, it was great. There's. There's some good, yeah. When I'm done, I'm I'm a little bit more proud of it because I had no idea what I was doing when I was out there. Um, right. So yeah, I like no that. scripts. I like that. I like I yeah. like I like seeing learning because I'm doing it too. Mm-hmm. You know, and like it's it's pretty cool to like watch someone, especially now with like social media and the way that it works is everyone is showing their like polished products. You very yeah. rarely see the process, and I'm all about process, and so it's it's cool to like see your videos that started with like just this, and then it became more vlogging, and then like seeing drone shots, and then now with the narration, and like it's cool, it's cool, and then like the yeah. little, little dance breaks, solid. I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure uh, th- some of the people that I watch, they're super professional. Um, sure, uh, and I'm I'm sure that there's people that have maybe looked at my videos and been like, oh, this guy doesn't. This guy's not really polished. He doesn't really know what he's doing out there. Um, but yeah, I am I am kind of learning. Uh, I feel like I'd learn a lot quicker if there was maybe a teacher or if I like <laughs> enrolled in a class. Yeah, um, I hear you. But yeah, it's definitely, and that's why, that's why it's like every month I learn a different direction I want authentic Florida to go. Um, right. Like I, I kind of wanted to do videos where I'm just like by a campfire telling stories of what I experience while I'm out there. Um, oh, I like uh, that little, little I, campfire story time. Yeah, or like a podcast where yeah. it's like, uh, it's, I love that. It's like I I love researching the crazy cool history of Florida and then writing about that. Um, like I I love the story times that I write about because dude, there's just such cool history in Florida. Yeah, um, and I like I I would want to do. A, a story like my own story time where it's like here's here's the the time i maybe got yelled at by this woman and then things escalated really quickly uh <laughs> let's tell you the story story time like i, I guess because i i realized a little while ago um like uh if i could do anything in this life if i didn't have to worry about money it would just be telling stories over a campfire yeah um same and and when I was doing, uh, like in in the the thick of authentic Florida stuff, I was like, I can do that. Yeah. Like I I can just get a fire and start telling stories over a campfire. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's something that I I just recently uh was watching stuff from like Critical Role and things from Campaign One that like I hadn't seen, but did I tell you about this with right. Axel Dan? Yes. Oh my God! Right, but it. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but the, I listened to the book, and a big thing they talked about. And did I tell you this already? Probably. I'm gonna say it again. Anyway. You didn't tell me you were listening to the book. So, but you told me you got it. I got the book. I got the audio book. It's uh the history of Critical Role, and it's uh, narrated by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, which is you know just fantastic. Cool. Um, but there's a part when they talk about they believe the appeal of D and D goes back to that human thing where we're used to 
you know, the the birth of storytelling, just telling stories around a campfire. And that's essentially what D&D is. Everyone's telling a Hell story yeah. around a table. And I was like, Hell yeah. I've never looked at it that way. And you're absolutely right. So I, I yes. Yeah. It's amazing. You say it a lot. Story is king. Story is king. I agree. hundred percent. I agree with myself. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> After I said, I agree. I was like, wait, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm excited to see like where this ends up going. Every time you go camping, I get pumped because I love camping and I haven't been in forever. I will go with you at least once. There's no, there's, I was about to say there's no rush, but there's a little bit of a, no, of a, little, rush. a uh, bit of a rush. <laughs> there, I mean, next year, prime time, maybe we'll find like just one night uh, that's Boom. not far away from Naples. And we'll just head out. We'll barbecue. We'll hang out. It's fine. Sweet. We'll do it. We'll do a little thing. You really should make a podcast. I think it's a great idea. Do a little campfire I, stories with you. I certainly want to do something. I don't like, I, uh, I'm sure everyone's like this, but I don't want to like invest a whole bunch of time in it. If I don't know what's going to go anywhere. Yeah, totally. Um, I understand. I've I'm, I'm proud and excited that the things I have invested time in have gone a slight push. Sure. Um, it's good but, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. I like it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. We're doing cool stuff. You're doing cool stuff. I like watching it. Oh, Brian, we are doing the coolest stuff, my man. I know. And people don't even know. They kind of know. People they don't. don't know. <laughs> no, they don't know yet. I almost slipped up earlier and I told know. them. But, I know. Well. So close. So close. Soon, my friend. Soon. Oh, soon. man. I mean, hey, we've been talking for over an hour and a half already, Victor. We did it. Brian, we, uh, <laughs> I could talk to you like I all know. Day. You know that. <laughs> I know. Sometimes we do. <laughs> I, I, I love you too much. We're doing too much together. We have too much in common. Yeah, I, we, we can talk for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, but people won't listen to it. So we got <laughs> we got to nip this in the bud eventually. <laughs> All right, let's you, wrap this up. You made your, your return appearance after five years. The next one will hopefully and be before that. <laughs> I cannot thank you enough just for letting me hang out and uh, chew the fat with you, buddy. Of course, of course. Now, before I let you go, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Talk to me about Authentic Florida. Uh, they can uh, just head straight to AuthenticFlorida.com, but you spell authentic with a K. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can uh, do the same thing on Instagram, uh, or you can find me on Twitter at VG Espinosa, uh, at VG Espinosa. That's it. That's it. I love it. I love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>